Saints Row is back and it continues the rather confusing trend of reboots that have the same name as their original game. I tempered my expectations going into Saints Row 2022, but I ended up with a slightly more grounded experience than the previous Saints Row games, some dumb fun and plenty of bugs. But how bad are the bugs and how fun is that dumb fun? Well, that's what I'm here to answer in Game Explained's review of Saints Row. In Saints Row, you play as a young, down and out hipster who decides to start a criminal gang in order to pay rent. And the humour aims its sights squarely on capitalism with a ton of one liners about making rent, paying off student loans, and more. Hey, hey the wage slave is back. How was your first day? Were the other mercenaries nice to you? You know, as far as hired killers go, I'd give them a seven. You look like you could use a mugmosa. Thanks, Eli. Seriously, how was the job? Yeah, it's the murder business. The fundamentals don't change, just the uniform. Uh, I can tell you love it. <laughs> okay. I don't have to love it, I have to pay my student loans. Pfft. <laughs> Amen. Unfortunately, it's pretty one note and doesn't have much to say, so the constant quips grow tired fast. It is clearly a parody of Graduate Live, but it never reaches the absurd heights of the previous titles. While they were no writing masterclasses, the absurdity of a gang leader becoming the President of the United States goes a long way in making the plots slightly more interesting as opposed to the almost too real struggle of making rent. In typical Saints Row fashion, it doesn't take itself too seriously, which is good, but the characters are so generic that when they eventually introduce their tragic backstories, I simply didn't care. On top of this, the story seems to conclude prematurely, and the twist at the end was just bizarre. You'll be greeted by a robust character creator. You can practically make anything you want. I'm boring, so I like to make a pretty normal looking character with a beard and a nice pair of glasses. But if you want, you can make the most hideous creation known to man. While I personally don't care too much about in-depth character creations, this level of customization runs through the whole game, from weapons, cars and clothes, so you can personalize the experience to your heart's content. Of course, Saints Row games are more known for their insane gameplay rather than their story, and this one has a wild amount of mechanics and systems. The whole premise of the game is about building up your criminal organization by placing criminal ventures around the map. In doing so, these generate passive income and unlock side missions. So let's take Shady Oaks Clinic. Here you use this place as a front to money launder, but instead of running a legitimate clinic, you commit insurance fraud in a pain or burnout fashion. You run in front of traffic, earn multipliers and try to hit as many cars as possible to reach a certain score. There are other criminal ventures and some have fun missions like testing out new and fun weapons and tech, while others are finding cars and driving them back to a garage to scrap for parts. The main issue with these is that they all have 4 to maybe 10 missions and even the fun ones like insurance fraud grew stale after the first couple. There is slight level gating as you have to complete a handful of ventures to unlock some of the later main missions but it isn't egregious. The gameplay loop is exactly what you'd expect. Drive or fly to a mission location, fight off waves of enemies and rinse and repeat. The character feels nice to control, certainly better than most Rockstar games, but the aiming didn't feel 100%. Regardless of what sensitivity I played it on, it just felt off and I hated the aim assist. I found it best to turn it off because I was wrestling with it quite a bit, which was jarring as most of us would be used to having aim assist on a controller. The majority of your time will be spent shooting so it's a shame that it never felt right. As for character progression though, you complete challenges to unlock perks and level up to learn new skills. On top of that, you can upgrade weapons of vehicles so there's plenty to keep you busy and the game constantly rewards you for doing things in the world. I enjoyed the challenge system as it gave me something to focus on during the brainless combat. In general, there's a lot to do in Saints Row, so as a turn your brain off checklist open world game, it is okay. Of course, as a post Breath of the Wild game, Saints Row had to introduce its own version of the parasail being a wingsuit. You can activate it by jumping from a height, and the game has three ways for you to reach these heights. So firstly, there's bungee ropes that fly up into the air. Secondly, there are high-rise buildings that have lifts that take you right to the top of them. And finally, and most fun, is to take a helicopter up into the sky and bail out of it. You can increase speed by pushing forward on the left stick, and holding the left trigger to slow down before landing. But the world isn't built well for it at all. Other open world games have things like updrafts that keep your momentum, and in this game you can land on other cars and jump off them, but again it didn't feel good to pull off and the sense of momentum just wasn't there. So I opted to use cars, helicopters and bikes to traverse the world. Now driving on the other hand feels great, thanks to the satisfying drift. Instead of using a handbrake to navigate corners like GTA, you have a Mario Kart-esque drift that feels amazing. 
There's plenty of fun to be had in the vehicles, especially since there are some crazy ones like a hover bike that shoots lasers or a hoverboard that can unleash an AOE slam. On top of that, you have loads of aerial control in these vehicles, so you can pull off some fun stunts. And that leads me to a section that is vital when talking about Saints Row. This is a series that is known for its dumb fun, and it certainly is present here. The variety in weapons, abilities, and vehicles lends itself well to the sandbox world, but I think this can only carry the game too far. Yes, you can pull off insane stunts, commit insurance fraud, and steal food trucks to grow your culinary empire, but at the end of the day, there are so many issues with this game that I couldn't see past. Fighting off waves of enemies with said abilities and weapons grows stale, especially with the slightly wonky aiming. And the fun isn't as dumb. It's a more grounded game, so there are no superpowers like in Saints Row 4. When aiming for all-out dumb fun, I look to games like Saints Row 4 and Destroy All Humans, as the absurdity of them games goes a long way. On the technical side, Saints Row is a bit of a mess. The game is riddled with bugs, including times when objectives wouldn't spawn in missions, the GPS navigation wouldn't take me to the optimal route, or even at times how my character wouldn't show up on the map or entering a helicopter would sometimes zoom the camera. There was a long list of performance and technical issues too. I played on the Series S and the game was kind of blurry, with objects off in the distance being tough to distinguish. There was popping galore, especially when traveling at speed or up in the air. There's simply a long list of issues with every aspect of the game. When it came to the character models, they looked just okay. The main characters looked fine, but hair looked strange. My character's beard would fade in and out during cutscenes as well. When it came to the clothing, I would change my clothes and edit their color, but then if I bought another piece of clothing, it would reset the colors of my clothes. The audio is much better, but it still has its issues, and the main problem is the mixing. While I can't show it due to copyright music, when two characters are traveling in a car talking to one another, the side character's voice will be drowned out by the car's music, and this issue cropped up throughout the whole story. Look, I have a high tolerance for bugs, as I love AA games, and I wasn't expecting much from a technical standpoint, but it really did get in the way. It's something I'm used to with the output of Deep Silver and similar publishers, but if you are a bit more sensitive to bugs, then keep that in mind. Overall, Saints Row was a buggy, sometimes fun, but mostly average game. There is some dumb fun to be had, the power-ups, vehicle and weapon variety add some fun to the mindless combat, but ultimately I had enough after about 10 hours, and the other 10 felt like a slog. The side activities were nothing more than checklist objectives that I was doing merely to progress and to satisfy my OCD by clearing the map. I couldn't care less about the stories and the characters, and the writing didn't resonate with me. The locales of the missions are varied, but all the objectives are go to this place, kill waves of enemies, and then leave. And with janky third-person shooting, I quickly grew tired of the combat. While I'm not a massive fan of Rockstar games, at least their missions have solid characters and writing to overlook these rather boring mission structure. And that's why I'm mixed on Saints Row. There we have a review for Saints Row. I would love to know what you think of the game in the comments down below. Don't forget to check out the videos on the right and you may as well subscribe while you're at it. I really appreciate your time and I'll see you all in the next video.